Now we're going to start try Django 1.10. And this one, we're going to actually set up our Django project, our virtual environment, and we're going to set it up into Sublime Text. So we're going to make an actual project for it as well. This is set up process that we've done so many times. We're not going to do a whole lot of complicated things in here, but I will mention that we're going to call the virtual environment try Django 1.1.0. And then we're going to call the Django project cur because we're going to be making a URL shortening service. We're going to explain that more as we go forward, but that's what we're going to be doing. So to do this, let's go ahead and open up our terminal window or our command line, and I'm going to change into the desktop. Now, if you're on Linux, you also open up terminal. If you're on Windows, you open up command prompt, and the commands are fairly similar. So I'm going to make the virtual environment two ways. I'm going to go make dir, and I'll call it try Django 110, and then I'll and, and cd try Django 110. So all this is doing is making a folder or directory called try Django 110, and then we're going to change into it. Press enter. It does that. And you should see on your system the try Django 110 coming through. So I don't use periods in here. You could use a dash, but I'm just going to leave it as 110 because I know it's not 110. I know it's 1.10, right? Now, intuitively, that's what's going on here. Hmm. So to do virtual environments, we can just do virtual env and just press period after that and press enter. I told you I was going to show you two ways on how to do it. So that is now version two for Python. So if I go into this and do list everything out, so ls in Linux and Mac, dir if you're on Windows. Um, so I list everything out and I want to activate it. So to activate it on Linux and Mac, it's bin.activate if you're on Windows, it's dash scripts, activate, just like that. Um, so we have our virtual environment activated, and if I type out Python, I see that I have Python version 2. Well, the reason for that is because of how we actually set up our virtual environment. Remember how I said I'm going to use version 3? Well, we want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, and then hit deactivate to end the virtual environment. And I'll clear everything with command K. Unfortunately, there's not a shortcut for Windows users to do that. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and just end that terminal session. I'm going to open up a new one. And I'm going to go ahead and list everything out. And I'm going to change into the desktop again. And I'll list everything out again. I see that I have that virtual environment that we just created, try Django 110. I'm actually going to throw that in the trash can. So I'm actually deleting that right there. So I list it out. It's gone. It's no longer there. So this is another way to make your virtual environment. You can just do virtual env, and then instead of the dot, we give it a name. So try Django 110. And then if I do dash p and then Python 3, this dash p and Python 3, all is one word, actually creates a Python 3 virtual environment with the name of try Django 110. I press enter, and that's what happens. So it's going to create Python 3 as it. We list everything out. Notice we're not in the try Django 110 folder or directory. So we change into that 110, list it out, and we do source bin slash activate. To activate it, we list it out and we type out Python. We see we're now in Python version 3.5.1. If I exit that out, I still have it there. And then I can also deactivate and then reactivate just as your system demands. Deactivate will de just writing deactivate in the virtual environment or will deactivate it whether on Windows or Mac or Linux. Okay, cool. So now we've got our virtual environment installed. Let's go ahead and install Django. We'll do pip install Django equals equals 1.10.2. The reason I'm using 1.10.2 has to do with the documentation. So in Django project.com slash download, we see the latest official version is Django 1.10.2. Now, if Django 1.11 is out and you're watching this, stick with 1.10, but follow with the previous releases over here, right? So if you were doing 1.9, you would do 1.9.10. If you were doing 1.8, you would do 1.8.15. So whatever version of 1.10 is out, the latest version of 1.10, that's what you're going to want to do in this. I know it's super tempting to use the absolute latest version. But if you're a beginner, there's zero reason for you to do that. Now, if you jump into the release notes, which really easily you could see what the release notes are, and I can actually 
get rid of that last releases. And this gives me all the release notes. So notice it has the version number 1.10 and then releases. All of these notes will share with you as to what things are happening inside of Django and the versions. So you can see deprecated features, that is features that are no longer available or otherwise known as backward and incompatible changes, right? And then also upgrading to new versions. So those are the things that you kind of want to think about if you make changes. I know that's a lot of information for the first start project one, but um, I get asked this question a lot and I just wanted to emphasize how important it is to stick with the version in the video because then minor little glitches won't be there because you're sticking with what we do in the video. All right, now that's all out of the way. Let's install Django. So I press enter and it's downloading and installing. I've got that latest version of Django and now it's installed. So if I actually wanted to switch versions, it's really simple. I just do pip install Django equals equals to the version I want. So I saw 1.8.15, I press enter. This is gonna download that version and uninstall the other version that we just installed, which was 1.10. It's really nice. Python package installer, otherwise known as pip, does this for us. So if you did start with a different version and you wanna go back, this is a way to do it. Now keep in mind that there are backwards incompatible changes. So if you wrote a bunch of code and you tried to change a different version, you're probably gonna see a lot of errors. So let's go ahead and install this and let's get back to 1.10. While that's installing, I'm gonna open up Sublime Text and Sublime Text in here, I'm gonna make a new, actually let's close that out and we'll just, we'll just make a new window here. So we'll go to wind, uh, excuse me, file and then new window. And this new window is where we're gonna add our new project here. I'm gonna to go to project, add folder to project. We'll go to desktop and we're gonna add the entire thing. So virtual environment of Trijango 1.10. I'll add that in there and we'll go to project, save project as, and we're gonna call this try Django dash 1.1.10. That's just what we're gonna name the project just so we can see that like it just separates it out a little bit for us. Okay, so now if I actually closed sublime text, so I completely quit it out and I open up my try Django 1.10 folder and then open up my Sublime Text project. It's gonna open up Sublime Text back for me. And oh, we wanna open up the workspace. We might have to just drag it into there. Yep, let's, so, so I just dragged in the workspace down to Sublime Text and there we go. So we actually have Sublime Text and our project all set up. And the next one will actually start to do stuff as far as creating our Django project um, and as well as what is still coming. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.